Hi everyone, it's Jen with Spirited Saturdays, and we are starting a new four-week rotation this week about relapse. And so the first thing that we're talking about on this week's topic is being kind to yourself when you're new to recovery, um, or not necessarily new to recovery, but maybe you're in recovery for a while and then you, um, you have a setback, but then you're new to the next phase of your recovery after your setback or things like that. Um, recognizing that the struggle might um, persist mentally and emotionally even when you're physically and behaviorally improved. So um, being kind to yourself when maybe you're physically and behaviorally seemingly um, seemingly stable, but there's so much going on in your head that feels like it, it could be a relapse or it could lead to relapse or just feel like you're not doing as well as you maybe feel physically. Um, the first thing I actually want to say is that, well, I don't know, I think I struggled with this, so if somebody else struggles with it, maybe you can understand, um, but um, you're not a fraud, and I know this might be a little um, not necessarily what everybody needs to hear, but just for me, I guess it would have helped to know, you're not a fraud if you look or you feel physically okay or good, and you're still thinking or feeling emotionally not so good, or are you still feeling like you're in the disorder. Um, you're not a fraud, and I say that because it's it's important to recognize the strength that it takes to, to to keep up the physical and behavioral aspect of recovery in the midst of all the emotional struggling. So you you're like struggling emotionally, emotionally or or cognitively, and yet even though you're doing that, you're still at you're still maintaining um, your physical health. You know you're you're not allowing those thoughts to then contribute to the maintenance of your physical health, you know, if, if that is so the case. Um, you know, so it's not really about not being sick enough because it doesn't show on your body, um, but you're thinking it. Um, you are, you're, you're, you're taking all sorts of strides because you're not allowing those thoughts to influence the behaviors. You're stronger than you ever thought you could be um, and that you realize. So just know that you're not, like, it's not that you're, like, presenting one face to the world and inside you're, you know, something else entirely is going on. It's that you're managing to maintain that physical health in spite of this, this conflict going on. You're still coming out stronger for it. Um, and the the truth is about that is that you... You, it doesn't mean that you don't have an eating disorder anymore just because you, you appear healthy, just because maybe your behaviors are at bay. Um, it doesn't mean that that you're, you're totally in the clear. It doesn't mean that you don't warrant the support and the help. It doesn't mean that you aren't as fragile as you feel. Um, it doesn't mean that at all. It simply means that it's evident that you're fighting. Um, you're fighting. And um, that's a huge part of recovery, and that's a huge part of the, not just the initial stages of recovery, but, you know, anytime you're having a hard time and you you face that vulnerability head on and you don't let it affect the maintenance of your health physically, um, that's a huge win. That's a huge success for you. So, you know, but, but then it's it's also important to pay attention to what's going on inside. That's very important um, because if you don't catch that, then then it, it could end up leading to you know other kinds of, of physical consequences. And it you know it, it's it's very important to be mindful of all that's going on in your head and all all of the whatever urges are coming up for you that you're you know even if you're not giving into them, it's important to be mindful of them. Um, and then they, then over time, they they don't have to become as as um, all-consuming or as uh, taxing, and and over time also they won't take as much effort to to overcome. Um, so I don't know where I 
was going with. <laughs> that was a little, um, not entirely onto a point. But, um, I uh, hope that made some sense. So I wanted to, um, oh, well, a couple things. I just wanted to let you know that, um, I was definitely hard on myself in the beginning of my recovery. And, um, I don't think I was as compassionate with myself as I could have been. Because the thing is, if you're struggling, that's all you need. That's enough. That's enough. Um, you don't need to judge yourself for struggling. You don't need to put that much more on yourself. Um, be hard on yourself because you're having a struggle. If you're struggling, that's all, you know, um, and I think that the, that's when the compassion can really come in. Um, you're allowed to struggle. I mean, you know, you're allowed to have a hard time. You're allowed to not know what's going on. And you're allowed to feel stuck because you feel stuck. And, um, you know, all that stuff is worthy of recognition, of, of your recognition. And then once you recognize it, you can honestly seek help for it. You can honestly talk about it. You, you know, you can work through it from an honest place. Um, try to remember that because it's easy sometimes to get wrapped up into this. I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be struggling. I shouldn't be facing this or I should be past this by now. You know, I, I did that. I was thinking, oh, a lot of people that I know who have struggled, who are, who I was in treatment with, you know, seem to not, you know, um, struggle with this kind of thing anymore. And here I am, you know, um, like I can't, you know, beat it. What, what's wrong? Why am I not trying hard enough? It's, it's, you know, but everybody, everybody is different and everybody has their own, you know, stuff in their head that lingers and, you know, for however long a time. And, you know, you have your own struggle and you're, you're allowed that. Um, as long as you continue to move forward, it's, it's understandable that you would struggle, um, on any level. Um, it really is. Um, that's why you need the support in place so that when you do struggle, you can recognize that and, honestly take it to somebody and 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 then instead of using the eating disorder to deal with it um, and get further into it that's when you would then implement the the coping mechanisms the tools so um, I wanted to read you something that I I wrote um, briefly yesterday if I could find it hopefully I can find it I found it okay so I wrote this yesterday um, pertaining to something completely different but then, um, when I wrote it, I read it back, I thought about some other things going on in my life, and I realized that not only did it apply to me, um, it applied to other people, and now I am realizing that it applies to the beginnings of eating disorder recovery. So what this started out is not even about eating disorders, but I'm, I'm going to read you now, I'm going to read you this now from, from that standpoint. So this is what I wrote. I am very much at the beginning. I'm a baby. I don't know yet, and that's okay. I'm seeing for the first time. Everything is new. I don't want to rush it. I don't need to impose understanding where understanding isn't necessary in order to partake. And that just rung true for me on so many levels. Um, you know, just personally, just things that I'm going through now that have nothing to do with the eating disorder, but um, this... Um, it, it helped me put, put, um, you know, gain some insight. And then I realized I can apply, you know, maybe to others, um, uh, for maybe completely different reasons. And, um, I'll put it in the description box below, but, um, I wanted to read it to you because I do think that it pertains to eating disorder recovery. Um, so you're at the beginning, okay your baby in some respects you're learning things for the first time you're learning things you're you're or you're forming new ways of being um, you're learning to to look at life in a very different way for the first time um, you're blossoming um, everything is new many things are new things that the eating disorder concealed from you um, and you don't want to rush it 
Um, you want to be gentle with yourself, compassionate with yourself, and take your time. And you also don't need to impose understanding where understanding isn't necessary in order to partake in recovery. Like, you don't have to understand everything. Um, with repeated healthy action, you know, you don't have to understand in order to make the right action. Um, and then over time, things will start to click into place. Um, or you'll know what questions to ask, or you'll have a better grasp on, on, you know, how exactly it's coming together. But you don't need to understand the decision behind every, or the, the reason for every decision, or the, you know, you just, you just need to, to act according to what your, your, well, actually, like when you're refeeding, um, there's no need to understand why a certain food is good for you or why you should be eating in a certain time because often your body isn't going to help you understand those things in the beginning. So that's why it's important to, to do things somewhat routinely for a while and then it will start to make more sense to your body and then just intuitively, you know, it will make more sense. Um, but yeah, that's something, for example, that you don't have to understand. You know, I don't have to understand why my body isn't hungry at, you know, lunchtime. I just eat because I know that my body needs to um, get back into a, a, a routine. And then later, you know, the longer I do this, like at some point it's going to recognize that and will adapt, you know, but, but I'm training it right now, you know. So you don't have to understand in order to train your body to do the right thing. Um, and then the, the bonus is that when you do the right thing long enough, then you will have the clarity, you will have the insight, you'll have that inner wisdom, you'll have the ability to make connections because you're just healthier all around. Your brain will be better at <laughs> functioning, you know, it will connect to your body more. Um, you know, um, you won't have to understand everything in words. You can probably consult your body and not have to think things through necessarily with words or you can feel things and resolve them that way or you can you know listen to music or express yourself in other ways and and resolve things that way so so understanding isn't necessarily a precursor to um, partaking in in recovery or at the beginning you know or to to really getting to live your life um, Sometimes you live and then you understand later, but that's just life. Um, post recovery, um, so yeah, um, it's like a little sampling of of what's to come. So I guess that's it. I'm feeling like a little scattered today, but I hope uh, this was understandable, or not, <laughs> or something. Yes. Okay. Have a great week, and I'll see you next week. Bye.